My name is Jeremy O'Harris, and I am a playwright. I wrote Daddy. And I feel like it's impossible not to get the idea for a play like Daddy when you like are living in LA um, amongst a lot of like casual wealth. There was like this thing that happened in LA where like I was like constantly at these like gorgeous homes and with like beautiful art with a lot of my friends and I'd be like, what does he do? And they'd be like, well, I don't really know. He just like sort of has money. And that was like a thing, like a common refrain. It created this curiosity and um, seeing all these like intergenerational relationships, especially intergenerational queer relationships, sort of like planted a seed inside of my, my mind like early on. Sort of like insemination is a good way of thinking about it because like I get the idea, it starts to grow within me and a lot of its growth comes from like the, and maturation comes from me like watering it by like talking to people about the play and all of its ideas and all the themes and reading a lot and like, you know, sort of like giving it the nutrients of like influence. So I was like watching a lot of Douglas Sirk. I was like reading all these like amazing French melodramas from like the 1800s and like really knowing that like I wanted to like tackle melodrama. I got into the McDowell Colony off the wait list, which was like really, really amazing and it changed my life. And when I was there, I wrote Daddy, like pretty pretty quickly. And so then Daddy became the sort of like key to like a lot of, um, of in, 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 a lot of introductions to like theaters in the city. And so it opened a door into a conversation about like what other plays I would write. And one of those places I had a conversation with was, um, was the new group. And Scott and Ian got really excited by it and they're like, we really want to do this play, but it is super expensive. Um, so we had to find the right person. So over the next two years, Donnie and I, with the new group, were in, um, were sort of like looking for the right person. And at that time, like I started writing more plays, and some of the theaters that had their doors open to me um, started reading those other plays. And Sarah Stern at the Vineyard really got excited by um, the plays I had been writing while I had been in grad school. And she was just like, like I want to like produce a play. You know, what have you written? And I was like, I really love to play daddy. And so Sarah, um, Doug, and Scott like joined voice, forces for the first time since like Avenue Q, which is like crazy. And um, yeah, we have this production. I mean, it is a really insane cast and it's really amazing that so many people from so many different parts of like both my journey and this play's journey are like able to all do it at the same time. Like Hari Neff and Tommy Dorfman, like they, there are people who like have who, whose lives intersected with like my life and my youth in Los Angeles in um, this really sort of magical way, and they're both like phenomenal actors. And then Ronald Pete was the first person that I ever cast in this play. And then Kyung Kim came in and sort of like knocked her audition out of the park. In that new group No Limits reading, uh, Charlene was the was our Zora. And I remember I was like so blown away by her that I was like, if we ever do this one, we have to do it with Charlene. We have to do it with Charlene. And then like Alan was like the gift that like just keeps giving to this play because, you know, in a lot of ways, like without, you know, stars as big as Charlene or Alan, like this play wouldn't have happened. So yeah, it's like really surreal. <laughs>